Right, in this next example of analyzing a machine, then we're going to take a look at a set of brakes for a bicycle. Now these are sort of traditional brakes in the sense of center pull brakes, right? And so on your handlebars you have grips that are attached to a cable. You squeeze the grip and that's going to pull on a cable. And that cable, which we're pulling on with 200 newtons force, is then going to pull up on this little wire that goes stretches over BGC. Now usually there's a saddle that happens right here at G, right? That that way you don't kink this wire, and then the whole system is uh, pinned at A, and that pin goes into the frame of the bike. Okay, so we're going to pull up on the main cable and that's going to pull up on these little wires which is going to want to cause then this armature BAE or and or CAD to want to rotate B and C going up which is going to take these two uh, pads and push them in towards the frame of the wheel right and that's going to create a normal force and then friction will be capable in and out of the plane and that's what's going to then provide the braking power on both sides. Right? So we pulled up with 200 newtons. Overall we're going to ignore friction. Right? Now not the friction that's here but rather the friction that uh, would be in this pin for instance and we're also going to ignore the spring, the rotational spring that um, after you release the brakes then restores these back into an open position. We're going to ignore all that part. Right? And the, the key really here is to draw good quality free by diagrams. Right? So let's take a look at what we've got up here at the saddle. Right? So at G, you'd have a free by diagram that would say that we've got this 200 newton force going up, and then we have a cable force going to the left and a cable force going to the right. We have symmetry, so that's T and T on those. And so let's see, we've got a triangle here that is five meters sorry, five centimeters, not five meters, five high and then half of this distance Y. So five versus four and a half. And so the hypotenuse on something like that would be 6.72 or 6.73. Right, so that would be sum of forces in the Y. We can take up positive. You'd have 200 minus 2 times T times 5 over 6.73 set equal to 0 and what will we find out? That Take this over to here, 200 divided by 2 is 100, 100 divided by 5 times the 6.73 and so the force in one of those cables is 134.5 newtons, not just one, they're, they're equally the same here. Alright, so that's that tells us then what's happening in, in this little wire that goes over there. Now, let's do a free body diagram of this little armature. Right, now, we don't have to get this exactly right to scale. We just have to get this approximate thing going here. And so let's show that. This is uh, BAE. And let's be a little bit more precise in our labeling. There we go. That's much better. That'll get you more points on the exam. So there's that piece. Now at B we've got this cable of at 134.5 newtons acting at the orientation we showed up here. At A we have a pin and A, X, and A, Y. Don't know, don't care if those are in the right direction. And down here at E we've squeezed this and so the rim is pushing back with this normal force. That's what we care about. And so all we have to do is some moments about point E to get what we're after. Not E, but rather about point A. So some moments about point A. Right now, I'm trying to squeeze this all in in a very short space on this document camera, and that's going to make this a little bit ugly here. But as we do this, some moments about A, we got the 134.5. Now, we got to think about what the dimensions are here. I'm going to probably break this into X and Y components. Come over to here, 
and it looks like, oh hey, the y distance is two centimeters, so that would be for the x component of that force. So that'd be going in the negative direction, so 134.5 times four and a half over our 6.73, that's the x component of the force, times two centimeters, that's our y distance, so newtons, centimeters. Then let's get the y component, so that's going to be also a minus 134.5 times now 5 over 6.73 times then its distance over, which is going to be our 4.5 centimeters. Right? And then that has to be equilibrated by the force that we want in that moment arm straight down, that's going to be that distance right there is the nine centimeters that we see right here. So nine centimeters times Fe, and that will be set equal to zero. Hey, that's not so bad. And so let's see what we've got here. We've got uh, one, th or well, 134 times 4.5 divided by 6.73 times two plus cable force times 5 divided by 6.73 times 4.5 equals, that's all a negative number, take it to the other side, becomes positive. So that's 629.7 divided by 9, and our Fe then becomes 69.966, or about 70.0 newtons for the normal force. And so that's kind of interesting. We don't really get much of a mechanical advantage here. But remember, that's 70 newtons of force on one side. We'll have 70 newtons of force on the other side. So we're really getting, we're splitting this 100 up into two things. And, you know, I just want to kind of look at this again to be real sure that I didn't make a mistake here. All right, so there's five, there's four and a half there. Bam, bam. Okay, so that's okay. And I don't mind double checking that 25 plus 4.5 in for squared equals that square root 6.73. Okay, so that's okay. We're doing the y component. We got the 5 over, so that's okay. And we get the 134.5, so that looks all right, times its x component. And then we'll add to that the y component effect and divide it by 9 I get the same number 70 so I think we're okay not much of a mechanical advantage but that maybe is why center pole brakes aren't the most efficient brakes that we might be able to use out there that's why you have some new types um, to get especially for mountain bike situations to get much better braking performance out of the same pole on the handles